Die Hard's a Christmas movie. What I get nervous about is if I make that proclamation. What bleeds over? Where do we draw the line? Yeah. You've got mail. Iron Man 3. L.A. Confidential. No. I, the Long Kiss Goodnight. That movie. <laughs> Which is an awesome action film. It's Shane Black, too. And it's. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Edward so, Scissorhands. Batman Returns. Well, what's the quote? Mistletoe is deadly if you eat it, but a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. That one's kind of a Christmas movie. Max, there's, there's multiple, like the, the really lighting of the tree, yeah. the all of that, right? Yeah. And DeVito kind of looks like mutant Santa. Steel Magnolias, The Sound of Music. If you say that Die Hard is a Christmas film, you open the door to say that all these movies are Christmas films. In, in particular, let's go to three. Lethal Weapon, First Blood, Trading Places. Trading Places, to me is more of a Christmas movie than Die Hard. In Italy, it is played nonstop on it's Christmas. True, yeah. It's the movie, that, like, you know how in America, A Christmas Story is yep. like, that. in Italy, it's trading places. Welcome to Buzz in the Tower, a podcast dedicated to the movies of the 1980s. Prepare to be stuffed in our DeLorean and taken on a trip through the best decade of film ever. Hey, Mo, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. So if you love Caddyshack, The Goonies, Aliens, Weird Science, Spies Like Us, The Great Outdoors, Empire Strikes Back, The Great Muppet Caper, Pretty in Pink, Predator, Rocky IV, Roadhouse, Say Anything, Real Genius, Short Circuit, Some Kind of Wonderful, Beverly Hills Cop, Akira, Tango and Cash, The Breakfast Club, and They Live, just to name a few. Then sit back, relax, and get ready to be entertained. Because we came here to chew bubblegum and podcast about 80s movies, and we're all out of bubblegum. If you haven't already, subscribe to Buzz in the Tower on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever your favorite podcast platform is. And while you're there, leave a review and a five-star rating. It's a moral imperative! You can also find us on TikTok, Instagram, and all social media platforms by searching the tag at Buzz in the Tower. That's B-U-Z-Z-N, The Tower. Also, check out our website, buzzinthetower.com, and grab some officially licensed gear. It's so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking some up. Now, if you want to get nuts, let's get nuts. Head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash buzzinthetower. With memberships as low as $3 a month, you can have access to tons of extra content, and a portion of all proceeds go directly to Save Ferris. Dark of shame, darling, dark of shame. Buzz in the Towers brought to you by Sonic Loans. You can find them at sonicloans.com. Max, big topic today. We're talking Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie? Is it not a Christmas movie? The only group of people more qualified to answer a question about life, liberty, and the pursuit of movie justice is our friends over at Sonic Loans. Charlie and his team is going to make sure that you're going out to the coast, going to see some friends. A few laughs. yippee ki PMI. Mother trucker. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Sonic Loans is going to make sure you get into the best mortgage possible, low rate, low fees. It's critical this time of year if you're trying to get holiday gifts together for the family. Reach out to Sonic Loans today. Tell them the Buzz in the Tower sent you. They're going to take care of you during this sweet, sweet time of Yule time joy. So make sure that <laughs> it's, it's creepy. It's super creepy. It's not a diehard quote. You just made it sound I like did, one. I did. NMLS number 1955855. Not available in all states. Not a commitment to lend. Additional requirements apply. Visit sonicloans.com or call 313 488 4888 for more information. Buzz in the Tower is also brought to you by Bolton Legal Group. You can find them at boltonlegalgroup.com for a free consultation. Call 248-595-0001. Max, I object. To what? You can't handle the truth. I, today, today, you want me on that wall? We are in court today talking about one of the most hotly debated topics you can have around the holiday season. No, a few Max. good men. I'm not talking about dreidel versus <laughs> Christmas lights. I'm talking about Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie? Is it not? Bolton Legal Group is who I'd want in my corner protecting me if I was making that argument. So today, tomorrow, they're they're the ones that we want. They're effective. They're aggressive. They're going to make sure that they take care of you during the holiday season. Max, yep. Bolton Legal Group, there's no one better. Tell them the buzz in the tower sent you and get ready to enjoy the legal experience. Happy holidays. Does anyone actually enjoy the legal experience? No. (laughs) 
Today's episode is Die Hard, A Christmas Movie. It's A Wonderful Life, A Christmas Story, Home Alone, The Santa Claus, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Die Hard? Yes, that's right. John McClane, Hans Gruber, and Sergeant Al Powell are in the same conversation as the Grinch, Clark Griswold, and Kevin. Ah! Or are they? And if they are, what are the long-reaching ramifications of such a proclamation? Today on Buzz in the Tower, we step away from our typical light-hearted banter and address one of the most controversial topics we have ever tackled. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? I'm Mo Shapiro, and joining me as always, the sugar, enriched flour, partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, polyphosphorate 60, and yellow dye number 5, to my otherwise healthy diet, Max Sanders. And with that, yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. Everything a growing boy needs. Jiminy Crickets, Max. This here, is a fun topic. I'm very excited. Here we are. You came in at the 11th hour with this. Here we're gonna, we are. We're going to do top five Christmas movies, and then you switch it up. Max. Yeah. This is one of the most hotly debated topics that's out there. It's so random, too. It's like, it just, how does an action movie, like, become 30 years later still something you argue about, you know? I uh, it, Its relevance is incredible. Is there anything else in any action movie that's argued about as fervorously or frivolously? Furry? Furby? Fur, I like Furby. Yeah, you like Furbies. Furiously. I'm going to I'm gonna ask. Right? Is and, there anything? And, and this is a big ask. I'm going to ask, since we already have a topic, that yeah. you not continuously introduce more topics. If you could just do that for me, that'd be great. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Can you do that? I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. Max. Good, good guy. Happy Hanukkah, Max. Hi. Hi. Is it Hanukkah yet? It's getting there. I think at the end of the week it starts. Cool. I could ask Siri. I want Siri, my Siri, when does Hanukkah start? Hanukkah starts the evening of December 7th. Oh, nice. So tomorrow night. Yeah. Giddy up. It ends on my birthday. All right. When's your birthday? December 15th. God, I hate your birthday. And so your birthday much. is the 30th, yeah. right? You yeah. have the same birthday as one of my friends. I don't remember which one. Maybe Fox or Bill. One of them is the 15th. I don't like that. All right, Max. We're on the show. Yeah, die hard. We got a lot of work to do, so let's jump into it. If this is your first time listening to the show, you picked a humdinger of one to start on because things are going to get intense. I'm going to force Max to actually put his thinking cap on and not just coast through this bad boy. Subscribe. You didn't tell me this. Uh, you're, I expect your best today, which is shame on me. But well, I, I promised other people I'd give my worst. So Yeah, like everyone you know. <laughs> it's an office quote. I know, but okay. you, you actually did probably. I promised someone that? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Max, what are we talking about? Die Hard. Yeah. Christmas leave, leave a review, five stars, uh, follow us, subscribe. It helps out the show, helps me, helps Max. It's the Christmas thing to do. Shout out to everyone who had us on our Spotify rap. That oh, was yeah. Cool. We did yeah. see a lot of those. Uh, f- any of our social media platforms, but most notably TikTok, at Buzz in the Tower, B-U-Z-Z on the Tower, buzzinthetower.com and patreon.com slash buzzinthetower. Best places to check us out, support the show. Today we're talking about one of the most important questions you could ask, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? I want to set some parameters around this conversation because, Max, if I know one thing, I know you. And I know I love structure. you are, you are going to just Live for it. fly off the rails if Thirsty. we don't do this. Why don't we start with the simplest thing in the world? What is Die Hard about? It's a holiday love story. New York City policeman John McLean, played by Bruce Willis, is visiting his estranged wife, Bonnie Bedelia, and two daughters on Christmas Eve. He joins her at the holiday party in the headquarters of the Japanese-owned business that she works for. But the festivities are interrupted by a group of terrorists who take over the exclusive high-rise and everyone in it. Very soon, McLean realizes that there's no one to save the hostages but him. Dum, dum, dum. Additionally, I think that it's disingenuous to call them terrorists because they're 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 bank robbers. Well, there's a whole thing. McTinneran took the script, which was a... It was a crime novel where they were terrorists and it was just too dark and he switched it to robbers because said robbers are fun. Yeah. So you can't you shouldn't call them terrorists. No. They're, they're faking as terrorists. They are. Remember he's like, I saw him in Time magazine. Yeah. 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 Um The Order of the Dawn. So I what I want to do today is I want to take all of the litmus tests that I've found mm. and I want to go through them one by one. Okay. And I want to say, and, and I think it's important for you and I to try to fight both sides of this. I don't know where you fall on this because we've gone back and forth on this as well. Are Do you have a hard position on this or are you are you waffling? Are you in the middle? So doing the research, I could be pulled either way. Good, then you're in the middle. Yeah. That, that's good. I, I lean towards, yes, it's a Christmas movie, but I have to tell you in doing the research, I kind of fell into the same bucket. A couple of the things that I found, I'm just going to read them to you. Uh, we'll, we'll do one by one. The first thing I found that said this is a, a, a an item that kind of has to be to be considered a Christmas film. Mm-hmm. 
And maybe, can I pause for a second? Maybe we would step back. Take this so seriously. Because I really want to do justice to it because I think it gets debated all the time. Let me start with a movie that unquestionably is a Christmas film from the 80s. The Santa Claus. Okay? Uh, yep. <laughs> so, like, there's no debating that's a Christmas film. The entire film revolves around Christmas. It is about Christmas. And John Santa Lithgow. Claus, yeah. John Lithgow, exactly. Um, hey, Santa. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. 9,000%. Right? It's not just that Christmas is in the title, but the entire movie is revolving around Christmas. So, it's interesting. They said... The, in the research of this, most Christmas movies talk about a simpler, kinder, kind of uh, more family-based time. You right. know what I mean? Like where you kind of reminisce about when things are a little slower. Right. And that's the opposite of what Die Hard is. Um, it is. Because it's not a simpler, it's the most complicated thing ever. It's a terrorist hostage negotiation. Well, but I, my counter argument to that would be that the basic narrative of Die Hard is a man returning to his family on Christmas. Yeah, but all the obstacles are so, but pause so on those the, aren't simpler I know, obstacles. but pause on the obstacles. Yeah. The basic theme of Die Hard is a man returning to his family on Christmas. Is it though? Because, I mean, like if it was just him <laughs> returning on Christmas, the terrorist and hostage stuff wouldn't be part of the film it that would just be built, him but trying the, to have a kid with his wife the terrorist and the hostage stuff represents the obstacles to the goal which is a man returning to his family on christmas that's a stretch that's I not think, a stretch i think so we'll we'll get to that okay you jumped that's yeah. okay i love you one of the so i'll give you the three or four litmus test fun, things i found one is that it must primarily be set during the christmas season check two is that the film must include traditional christmas figures in a prominent role Three is that it must have a traditional Christmas theme, love, hope, generosity, faith, redemption, family. Okay, that one works. It doesn't have to hit all of these yeah, yeah. in order to be considered that, right? Um, and then another way to look at it is, does watching the film any other time of year feel weird or out of place? And if you take the Christmas out of the movie, does it still make sense? So these are, I just gave you five items. Let's go to the very first one. Must primarily be set during the Christmas season. That's an easy one, right? It is, but it came out July twentieth, nineteen eighty eight. I know, but th- see, I think that's so a set. I mean, you know, is Ma- it, Miracle on thirty four Miracle on thirty fourth Street was released in May. Really? So I think that that gets thrown out right away. What kind of PR team do they have? That's my point. I think when a movie is rela- released, is completely irrelevant. Okay. I, well, this would be my argument. Yeah, no, for no, that no. Being I, I'm surprised by yeah. Miracle effed up. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they effed up. I mean, it, it was. What it, I also want. I've always wanted to pull an old man's beard like that. Remember, he's like, yes, a hundred percent. It's cute. I also think like we, well, whatever. We'll Stand get, on we'll trial. Get into this second. Uh, you you can't handle the truth. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm distracting you. You are. I'm trying to stay focused and you're going to make you're it You're treating this really okay. like seriously. Can I we have, have fun? I have like pages upon notes on this. this yeah, but can deal. we have fun doing it? I'm having a great time. You're acting like this is like, I don't know, your kid got pulled Walker. over for drunk driver, driving driving and, and you're like, bum, bum. <laughs> you're the lawyer. Just shut your mouth. <laughs> First one where you agree with, it Here's takes place it. during Christmas season. Yes. Right. One day. The second is that the film must include traditional Christmas figures in a prominent role. It doesn't check the box on that. There's no Santa. There's some allegories apparently with Bruce Willis being Jesus Christ because he hurts his feet. Just so we're clear, though, that's every action movie. Every Mm -hmm. single action movie, like you have the hero's journey and the hero's journey is based on the story of Christ. You think so? In almost every movie. What is the what is the hero's journey? Get the get the gang together. Get the apostles be betrayed and then redemption resurrection. Right. Like not everybody dies, but there's always this moment of, I mean, look, the major name of an action film. I'll tie it to Jesus. Well, yeah, the Matrix is a good name, one. Name another one. Name any action film. I'll tie Commando. it to Jesus. Fine. Starts off. He's with his daughter, just like Jesus was when Jesus' daughter was kidnapped <laughs> from the mountains by General Kirby. How much ice cream? How much ice cream? This is falling apart. OK, Judge Dredd. Demolition I'm, I'm Man. Done. I'm done. I hate you so much. <laughs> is Simon is Simon says the Romans? Sure. Exactly. <laughs> you, you get how it works. I I think there's something that Die Hard does that offsets the fact that it doesn't have a traditional Christmas figure in prominent role. Okay. It has dozens of references to Christmas, visual and script. That is true. Which we'll get into because I counted every single one. Really? I'm mentally ill. We'll talk. You want me to hop into it right now? Do you, I mean, you don't want to yet, right? <clears throat> do you wanna... I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. I think the strongest argument for why Die Hard might be considered a Christmas film is that there's over 24 references to Christmas in the movie. Oh, 24. Wow. You, Stephen Fowler only got 21, like researcher and all. So you well, got three extras. I do. 
Well, that's actually a lie. I, I combined some of these, so maybe my number is the same, and I separated others. Let me just go through the ones I have. Okay. The first one, uh, Nagatomi, uh, Party, the Christmas tree, and the CEO wishes everyone a Merry Christmas. Yeah. The very beginning of the actual movie. And then... <laughs> This is the best. The Pearl uh, Harbor thing? No, 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 no. What's the Pearl Harbor thing? It's a really offensive quote, but it's Christmassy. So uh, when John McClane meets uh, uh, Joseph Tagag- Tagashi, how do you say his name? I don't know. Uh, when he uh, meets jo- Joseph Tagagi, you know, the guy who uh, runs the company, he goes, you throw quite a party. I didn't realize they celebrated Christmas in Japan. And he goes, hey, we're flexible. Pearl Harbor didn't work out, so we got you with tape decks. That's terrible. Yeah. I did not realize that. Uh, but, I mean, it's Christmassy. What's, uh, what's the... Hans Booby, what's his name? Uh, Ellis. Ellis. So immediately after that first example I gave you. Who directed PCU. Which is incredible. Yeah. Um, Holly uh, is talking to Ellis, and Ellis is like, you know, how about dinner? And and Holly's like, it's Christmas Eve, family, stockings, chestnuts, Rudolph. Oh, that's good. Uh, you know, like, you know, join the party or you're going to make me feel like Ebenezer Scrooge. Again, more Christmas references. The third one, um, she's on the phone with her kids. No snooping for presents. What his daughter says, his dad coming home soon. Holly says, we'll see what Santa Claus can do. Oh, okay. Third yeah. reference yep. to um, fourth reference. Uh, mind if we hear some tunes when he gets into the car with Argyle. Argyle and uh, you got any Christmas music and he plays. And this is also, we'll talk about this separate from my examples are four Christmas songs in this movie. There's three. What are the three? Uh, it's, well, I mean, you're thinking, hold on. I have it right here. So like you said, he gets in the car, and it's uh, Christmas in Hollis by Run DMC. Yep. And Winter Wonderland by Felix Bernard. Yep. And there's Jingle Bells being hummed. Yep. Let It Snow is being played at the very end. Yep. That's not a Christmas song, but it's seasonally Let It Snow. So I'm going to – and there's another one on top of that. Um, What is the Ode to – Ode to Joy? Ode to Joy. Beethoven, right? Not a Christmas song. No. But here's the thing. Are you ready for this? I'm going to make the argument it is a Christmas song, and I'm going to make- Because a, of this movie? Nope. Because, Max. So are you familiar with a song called Jingle Bells that you identified in this movie as being a Christmas song? I would hope so. Jingle Bells is not a Christmas song. What's it about? Are you ready for this? This is how deep I went in the research. Okay. In the 1800s when the song was developed, yeah. it's a Thanksgiving song and a drinking song. Really? Yes. Why? Shortly after that, it got attached as a Christmas song, but I want you to think for a minute about the words in the song. There's not one reference to Christmas, not one reference to Santa, not one reference to presents. Jingle bell, jingle bell. That's jingle jingle bell rock. rock. That's different than jingle bells. Oh. Dashing through the snow on a one horse open sleigh. That feels like Rudolph, though. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Batman smells. This is, by the way, I can totally, totally imagine this is a drinking song. Why? I mean, what, you take a shot when you hear? Who knows? But it's a drinking song. Can we start drinking Imagine right now? having a beer and having jingle bells, jingle bells. I don't know what access this, but it's not. Have a, can we not, have a show where we drink? What? Can we have a show where we drink? Sure. Why not? How about right now? No. It's nine it's in the morning. It's nine in the morning. <laughs> on a Wednesday. Yeah, no, you're good. Thanks. <laughs> I'd have to crash here. <clears throat> no, that's, a, that's an extra <laughs> reason why. But I want you to think about that for a second. Jingle Bells is not a Christmas song, but we affiliate it as a Christmas song because everybody, it's the most popular Christmas song that's not a Christmas song. So this is an allegory so, to Die Hard? So no, uh, Ode to Joy. Yeah. Ode to Joy, you know, Ode to Joy is hummed by Hans multiple times. Like before you hear it, you hear him going, hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah. It comes on later. And it was it was a hymn in church, but it's considered to be a Christmas song. Really? So that's how I give you five Christmas songs. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the FBI. Back to my list, if you would. I just finished with number four, which is where he said, do you have any Christmas music? And he plays it in the limo. Number five, didn't realize they celebrated Christmas in Japan, which you mentioned. Number six, main lobby Christmas tree. And this is also where McLean is whistling jingle bells when he walks in. Yep. Okay. Number, what am I on? Seven, Christmas lights uh, in the main room after the alarm is set off. Uh, number eight, Santa with the lights on it. Number nine, he takes all the lights and the hats off and you get the hat on top of dead, uh, with the, the dead dude. Ha ha ha. Ho ho. Oh yeah. I can remember. Tony. It was, it, 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 Tony. Um, puts him in the hat. Now I have a machine gun. Ho 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 is number nine. Number 10, Christmas tree at the dispatch. When he, uh, gets the alarm set off and he's yelling at the woman on dispatch, there's a little Christmas tree on top of her okay. dispatch board. Uh, by the way, this took me two and a half hours to do yesterday. Uh, number 11, Let It Snow is playing at the convenience store. Al Powell is singing it. Yeah, yeah. You remember that? Yep. Uh, number 12, Sorry to Waste Your Time, Big Christmas Tree in the Lobby. Um, when the guys actually show up and he's like, Sorry to Waste Your Time. I got 50 time. bucks on yeah, this game. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Um, Lewis, and also, uh, 
and he uh, says Merry Christmas to each other and then starts singing, the weather outside is frightful. Uh, 13, Max, your favorite one. Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring except four assholes on the front lawn. Theo, Theo has some serious Theo. Christmas. Yeah. He's wearing a Christmas sweater, too. I, we didn't count that, but I agree with that as That's well. That's a very Cosby Christmas sweater. Number 14, uh, the last one is going to take a miracle when he's talking about opening up the well, safe. Well, don't worry, it's Christmas. And Han yeah. says, oh, dude, dude, Christmas, Theo, it's a time of miracles. Is he also oh, Buffalo Andres? Bill? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's not, he's, he's Bane. Uh, Bane. Buffalo Bane. Buffalo Bane. <laughs> Oh, oh, Bane, that's good. <laughs> Number 15, they open the vault. Theo says, Merry Christmas. Number 16, Holly McLean's house has a wreath on the door when the news guy is trying to uncover where she lives. Number 17, Christmas tree falls over after the explosion and there's water everywhere on the, you know, the chopper blows on the two top doors, top floors. Number 18, jingle bells sound and then there's... Like at the end when he goes to grab his gun that he's taped to his back. By the way, that jingle bell sound is throughout the whole movie. It's like it's okay, like yeah, a dark yeah. like ding 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 ding. Yeah. And then he goes to grab the gun and it's like wrapping tape with like uh, yeah, yeah yeah. So they saw that. And number nineteen, if this is their idea of Christmas, I got to be there for New Year's. And that's the last line of the movie. It is. Yeah. So to me, that is your strongest case for yes, Santa Claus is not in the movie. Yes, there's not a reindeer in the movie, but there's over 20 plus four songs listed throughout the whole movie. So let me pose something to you, though. Yes, pose away. Let's say this movie took place on a 4th of July barbecue. Yes. At Nagatami Plaza. Yes. Would that work? You have to change the script, but like... But yeah, it would still work. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Would the movie be less excellent, though? Yeah. It would be less? Well, I mean, I think there's an element of this, right... No, I this is I'm not going to I'm not going to shoot that down. This is the counter argument. Yeah. Is it a Christmas movie? But here's the thing too, like take a hard okay, take home alone. Okay? Apply the same thing you just did. They're going away for Labor Day weekend. I think it because of the nine kids and the family aspect of it. Right. Spring break. Spring th- break vacation to Hawaii. Yeah, but I'm saying I think the action and the fact that he's a cop is the catalyst of this movie. It's not the family stuff that you really care about that much. It's more the Hans McLean battle. Right. Okay. I'm with you on that. Right. I'm it, just trying to play devil's advocate. I'm with you on that. Yeah. But, but in Home Alone, it's Kevin and the pranks and the being on his own and setting up booby traps that that carries the movie. It's not Christmas. You don't think so? Like the spirit no. of it, like that house no. and like, I don't know, the lights and all? No. Okay. No. I think I think because again, what are the most memorable parts of that movie? When he shaves, yeah. when he's ordering pizza, watching TV, when he's watching TV. It's it is the story is the fulfillment. Look, this is what we talk about with um, Donner and the Goonies or Spielberg. It's the story of a child being thrust into an adult situation and mm-hmm. having to navigate it. That's the story of Home Alone. There is a element of Yule timiness to it, right? The church, the neighbor, the cute aspects. I agree with that, hundred percent. But you could make the movie without it. Yeah, you can't make Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street without, without Christmas. You know, that this is the this is the line. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean that it's not a Christmas movie, but it's a valid line to make. Yep. By the way, if you go with that as your definition, you kill off a ton of movies that you would quote unquote call holiday movies. Yeah. So I guess uh, you know who Jan uh, Jan de Bont is? I don't. So he's a cinematographer for this movie. Okay. He also directed Speed. Okay. So this dude is awesome. I mean, he's just incredible. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. he says it's far-fetched to put a Christmas movie out as a summer blockbuster, quote-unquote. And he said, I'm not sure if the spirit of Christmas is fully embraced by that movie, to be honest. And But he says he takes no offense with those who disagree with his view. He goes, I totally get it. It's so funny. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's one of the guys that was, uh, you know. Those responsible for it. Yeah. So we've gone through on the litmus test. We've gone through has to primarily be set in Christmas season. We've gone through must include traditional Christmas figures. Now let's get to the must have a traditional Christmas theme, love, hope, generosity, faith, redemption, family, fear. This is where I think you can make a case. And I don't think it's a stretch. You call it a stretch because you gun to your head. This movie for you is an action film about bank robbers and being stopped by McLean. My favorite part of this movie is watching Hans Gruber cook and watching McLean try to be the fly in the ointment. 100 percent. Right. percent. I'm not watching for the Christmas vibes. I'm not like dipping a gingerbread cookie in milk and. In my sweater, and I'm, uh, I'm a Jew, so I'm I, it's okay. No, I understand. <laughs> I think that the I think the one of the best parts about this movie is McLean. The idea that your hero think about when this movie came out. What year did uh, Die Hard come out? Eighty eight, nineteen eighty eight. Prior to nineteen eighty eight, your heroes of We're the eighties were all 80s, steroided out. 
Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Van, Van Dam. <clears throat> I won't say Dolph, I won't Dolph say, Lundgren. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren yeah. certainly won't say Seagal. But you've got Rocky IV. You've got these the, the crescendo of yeah. the hero. American Ninja. This guy. Yeah. This guy has got a five o'clock shadow. He rolled out of bed. He's, He's got a drinking over. problem. He's hungover. He's a terrible husband. He He's has balding. destroyed his marriage. Yeah. To me, this does have the feel of the redemption of the hero. This has the, it's a little bit different than a standard action film. When you tie that to the holidays, the theme of redemption as a holiday theme, I think is the best of all of the holiday films I've ever watched, mm. right? Miracle on 34th street, right? When you're defending Santa, Santa on trial. and you're and you, like this, this, I like even, even uh, the Santa Claus, even what was the Dudley Moore uh, one with the, the Santa Claus? Yeah, he's the elf. Yeah, it's this. The, it's the human piece of like him realizing that he should have stayed with Santa and protected him the whole time. You know, like yeah, and that Meredith Burgess is actually a better, <laughs> better elf. Get up, get up, you <laughs> elf, because Mickey loves you. Like that. That is such a holiday theme, Max. Redemption yeah. is like so. To me, isn't this movie the redemption of Do- of John McClane? He's a terrible husband. He he catches himself being awful to Holly when he's like, oh, I noticed you didn't take my last name. But like, you know what John is above and beyond everything else? He's a hero. And he saves everyone in there and gets to get back with his family. Ignore the fact that we learn in sec- say, second and third. I would say for the next 25 years. One. And also at the end of this movie, you, you don't think he changed. He was just put in a situation where his skill set was able to save people. How about the redemption of Al Powell? How about, come on, he, come he, on. He gets to murder again? Yeah. That's that's what every cop wants. On the holidays. <laughs> if you really think about it, it's like, oh, great, he can shoot people again. They're, they're, it's not the best thing. Their friendship is my favorite action film friendship ever. More Whoa. than Dutch and Dylan. More than Dutch and Dylan. Running scared, I like no, a lot. D- the the moment that that music stops and he takes the revolver out and it's all in slow mo and he saves his <laughs> life. I, I, come on, dude. Come on. He's murdering people. I, I love their whole friendship is incredible, right? The fact that Carl survived is ridiculous. I know. How do you get know. out? I don't know. They, they never told us. <laughs> no, they never did. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I do think it, it hits the theme, but I, I, I can understand the counter argument to that, which is to your point, this is a traditional shoot 'em up action film. Yeah. Spe- and, but actually, that, that's actually helpful to the Christmas argument. It's that you want a formulaic movie where you know what's going to happen. Yeah. This is a formulaic movie. Yeah. 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 Well, no, you you know there's going to be some pitfalls. He's going to get his feet with the glass. Yeah. But he's in the end. No, you know what's. I, I agree with that. There's no. There, this isn't the the sixth sense. Like, no. You, there's no sh- like surprise. You know. I mean, like I get excited every time I see that she's going to punch out the reporter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, how yeah. you end a movie. That's you, Christmas. Yeah. That's absolutely okay. <laughs> uh, speaking of Christmas, why don't we take a quick break for some words from our sponsors and then hop into the second half of our debate. Buzz in the Towers brought to you by Dolby Real Estate. You can find them at weardolby.com. Max, uh, I've got this opportunity to invest in some commercial real estate at a place called Nagatomi Plaza. Oh, it's Towers or Plaza? That's Fox's headquarters. Is it, is it Tower or Plaza? Plaza. Plaza, yeah. Plaza. What do you think? Is it worth it? Yeah. I've been told their security's top notch. <laughs> I mean, Max, today is uh, our Independence Day. No, I'm just kidding. Dolby Real Estate <laughs> is the I'm is, back. Is the group that you want in your corner when you're going to buy a house or sell a house. This time of year, a lot of people are listing their homes for sale because it's just a rough time of year. They can't afford a piece of coal for their kid's stocking, so they sell the house, <laughs> do they? a trailer, and come cross country to visit <laughs> Cousin Clark and his family. Are we buy, talking about Christmas buy, vacation? Buy a lot of dog food? I don't know what's going on. I know Adobe Real Estate is the best you real serious, estate Clark? group out there. You got to make sure you talk to them. Tell them the buzz of the tower sent you, and they will take care of you like your family. $400 million in sales, 1,000 homes sold. Reach out today. So the last two items on the litmus test that I have, does watching the film at any other time of year feel weird? No. You can watch Die Hard anytime. But However, does it add something that it's in Christmas? So have you seen, um, oh, it's the office. It's called Dwight Christmas. It's uh, it's where he's he's Krampus, essentially. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you remember what happens with, um, so do you remember in that episode when Pete teaches Aaron about his favorite movie, Die Hard? Remember how Pete had committed to memory oh, every yeah, yeah. single yeah. line from Die Hard? Yeah. So like Do it. Yeah. So it's it's funny because within social pop culture, like this is widely considered to be a Christmas movie. Yeah. Uh, Yahoo did a poll a few years ago. Fifty percent of Americans view Die Hard as being a Christmas film. Yeah. So you're afraid of flying. No, I'm not. No, no, no. It's starting. Oh. 
right? So you do remember. Yeah. yeah, you remember. Yeah. It's incredible the things that you remember and don't remember. <laughs> it blows me away. Uh, Aaron's cute. Yeah. All right, just calm down for a second. Um, so watching at any time, any other time of year, you, you know, to your point, does it feel more special when you watch it around Christmas? I can watch Die Hard any time of year, but it does feel more special when you watch it. When you're nice Christmas. and cozy. Yeah. 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 But I mean, Bruce Willis even said it wasn't intended as a Christmas movie. Uh, or the fact that it was deliberately built around Christmas. And Jingle Bells wasn't intended as a Christmas song. Yeah, I guess. That's my fallback on everything, right? Yeah, sometimes things happen and you can't control <laughs> how people interpret them, right? I, right? I mean... Yeah. I, okay. That's... Dang, just, that's I mean, just good... because they didn't set out to do no, it. No, that's really... I just caught myself in a so like, uh, spider web of think, lies. So think, think about this. When we talk about um, cult favorites, yep. movies don't set out to be cult movies. They set out to be commercial successes. Yeah. Carpenter would be, rather be like, I'd rather have a blockbuster. I don't, right. don't want to be a cult guy. Right. I was 100. bummed out. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. Um, Another is like little piece of Christmas that is, it's underrated, but when Alice gets a Coke, Coke is very traditionally like Christmas oriented. Oh, absolutely, Max. Yeah. One, we, how about we didn't even talk about this? His, he doesn't ask for a fresca. His wife's name is Holly. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, is that, I know that they claim that they didn't mean for this to be a Christmas movie, but like, how is that accident? Do you happen? kiss under Holly, or is that that's mistletoe? Okay, what's Holly? And you shouldn't kiss anyone. Holly Jolly Christmas. <laughs> Have a Holly Jolly. No, Holly Christmas. the the plant. Yeah, isn't it? I don't know. Okay, dude, I'm as Jewish as you are. Okay, no, you celebrate Christmas all I the time. Do. You celebrate Christmas too. Uh, but you have like trees in your house and stuff. You have trees in your house. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Since when? Turn around. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, that's good. Um, all right. So we've determined that it doesn't feel weird to watch it on other days, but it feels particularly good to watch it over Christmas. I could watch I could watch Santa Claus the movie in July and be happy with that. Like I've watched Christmas. Have you? I watch I watch Home Alone other times of the year. Yeah. I showed I didn't wait until Christmas to show Home Alone to my kids. Okay. So I, I could see I So here, what movies do you dust off for Christmas? So yeah, that was just is Gremlins? Say. Yeah. Well, so we're gonna get into that. Yeah. Is, that's how we're gonna conclude this entire conversation. Okay. Is the if we it's an if then. If Die Hard is a Christmas movie. What is and isn't? Yeah. I mean, what what parameters have we set? We will talk about that. But I will say that there are only a handful of movies that do feel weird watching them outside of Christmas. Mm. And to me, Rudolph Claymation, Frosty yep. the Snowman, those types of like Jack children's Frost. movies. Yeah, like hard built in children's movies. I, you, I have trouble watching Did you accidentally ever rent the uh, horror Jack Frost rather than the regular Jack Frost in Blockbuster? Because no, they look the same. That's really funny. No, yeah. I didn't. Um, the last kind of item on our litmus test was if you take the Christmas out of the movie, does it still make sense? This is tough because I, I think there's not a single, we did that. We talked about this with predator, like predator sci-fi action. If you pull the sci-fi out of predator, you can okay, still make a movie. Cause think about it, right? Like you still watch those guys hang I, out. If, if instead of it being a predator, if it like, if the cabinet ministers were actually kidnapped by gorillas that were just really yeah, talented cool ninjas, killing machines. Yeah. yeah. I'd still watch that movie. It would still work. It wouldn't be as good, but it would work. It might be better. Might be. Oh, easy. There's no, might be better. There's no, might be better with predator. Just think about no, what no. you're saying. Listen to me. You get more time. Like if the team is as good as they are against Max, humans, listen, Max, I'm Hey, not, I'm not listening to this. You get more time hanging out with all of them. They don't get dead. I get sexual Tyrannosaurus lines for another hour. I get, I get Bill Duke clean shaving. I just want I just want to tell what, you is it dry shaving? what you're doing is dry shaving. What you're doing should never be done. <laughs> more Sunny Landum? No. The movie's perfect. It wouldn't be as good. It but it, it could be good is the point. So can you remove Christmas from Die Hard? And this is the this might be the strongest argument for Die Hard not being a Christmas movie. We could have had a 15-movie Predator franchise, <clears throat> Fast and Furious style. We need to move past this and move on to Die Hard. Okay. I know you're salty about it. This is the point, though. And this is the, this is the strongest argument, in my opinion, for why Die Hard would not be considered a Christmas movie. You can remove the Christmas from Die Hard and not really miss a lot. In that movie. Oh, and here's a great argument too. That uh, are you sticking with what we're talking about or jumping to another one? No, no, this is with that. I'm just making sure. Yeah, that with, look in your eye. With Die Hard as a series, two, three, four, and five, the Christmas element never comes back, and some of those movies are still excellent. Two, I thought, takes place right around Christmas. Does it? Yeah, they don't lean into it, but so, I feel like it's a year later at Christmas. The only movie that's comparable to Die Hard in the series is three, and that has nothing to do with Christmas. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Although, doesn't three take place 
No, like Fourth of July? No, not Christmas. But don't they also do it like on like Fourth of July weekend? It's the summer in New York. I know that. Yeah, yeah. But either way, Hot town. Someone yeah. in this isn't that song in it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like better, Die Hard three or one? Oh, one. I what? like three. Three's good. I love Sam Jackson. So that well, helps. Jeremy Irons rules too. Hey, he's good. And that girl like gives me a confused. Uh, just attraction. relax. Just relax. Slip my throat. That's wow. I wish. Boy, happy <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mo. Um. But this is the this is the strongest argument for it not being, in my opinion, yeah. that you could pull the Christmas out of it. So those are the litmus test items. Let me just run through a couple other things, and then I want to talk about the what if, right? Mm-hmm. And by the way, this also goes to a fact that you've brought up before as well. Just because a movie didn't set out to be something doesn't mean it doesn't become that, right? So like, even the and this is true with music too. The Ode to Joy, Ode to Joy is not a Christmas song, but in Japan, it's considered a Christmas carol. Hmm, that's random. But it's a bunch of people, I guess. Walking around singing like, Love and Die Hard. <laughs> um, for a movie that was racist about their I know, people, <laughs> I know it's not not good, not good at all. Um, I, these are some points. What's well, so random? You know, uh, Kenny Loggins, not Kenny Loggins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that one was like, how are you going to fit Kenny? Loggins no, Kenny G. Okay, you know the saxophonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His song is known in China as the closing song for, for bars. bars. I didn't yeah. know that. And it's like he didn't set out for that Why to happen. Why did we talk about that on the podcast? That uh, came Den, up. Den, Lebert, Den Lebertard, he talked about it. No, we talked about it on the show one time. Really? We brought this up before. Yeah. I wouldn't know it, I wouldn't know it any other way. So I already mentioned that the narrative of this movie is a man returning to his family on Christmas. I mentioned that his wife's name is Holly. I gave you the 20-some facts. Here's a couple other things. Takes place on Christmas Eve. Doesn't take place on Thanksgiving, the 4th of July. No, it was originally supposed to be three days, mm-hmm. and they like dial it down to one. And also uh, Shane Black, who's the writer of this movie, he uses Christmas a lot as themes of his movies, like the long uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Lethal Weapon, and a few other ones. Mm-hmm. He likes Christmas as kind of like a general theme of his. This might be a little bit of a stretch, but Hans Gruber, classic capitalist villain, yep. right? Stealing money, aligned with Old Man Potter, and It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> Let me think about it, right? Or Scrooge. Or Scrooge, yeah. They didn't get visible by three <laughs> he, votes. He doesn't come to look. No, yeah. that doesn't happen. Uh, soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack's a strong argument. I mean, I mean that's that's also the lethal weapon argument, which we'll get to very shortly. Um, Santa Claus is in the movie, the little play one that he takes the hat off of and throws it to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the film ends with uh, a, a, a Christmas song. I mean, I... Yeah. All right. It's interesting. Here's... My issue with this is how my brain thinks in a vacuum. If we're just talking about Die Hard and there's no ramification to our opinion, I would tell you Die Hard's a Christmas movie. What I get nervous about is if I make that proclamation, what bleeds over? Where do we draw the line? Yeah. So I want to give you a list and I'm going to go outside of the 80s on this. Okay. I want want to give you a list of movies that I feel like we could make the same argument for it being a Christmas movie, even though it's not. Okay. Yep. You've got mail. Ooh, no. Why? I don't know. It's about Iron Man 3, LA Confidential. No. I, Max, all these movies fit the long kiss goodnight. That movie, <laughs> which is an awesome action film. It's Shane Black, too. And it's, oh, that's right. Yeah. You're totally right. I yeah. forgot about it. Gremlins. That does. What? How are you distinctively differentiating between Gremlins and the ones I just gave you? Because those movies, their central plots are. Not based on the fact that it's Christmas. Without Christmas, he wouldn't get the gift of the gremlin. He could have got it for his birthday. It could have been any. It could have been a birthday anniversary gift. The seasonal like Max, small townness. Edward of it. Scissorhands. No, why? Because he's got scissors for hands. Well, <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> How about this one? And so sadly too, Batman Returns. Uh, that that mi- kind of mi- missile that... mistletoe is deadly if you. Uh, well, what's the quote? Mistletoe is deadly if you eat it. But a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. That one's kind of a Christmas movie. Max, there's there's multiple, like the, the really lighting of the tree, yeah. the all of that, right? Yeah. And DeVito kind of looks like mutant Santa. Steel Magnolias? No. The Sound of Music? The what are you- Cro- Chronicles of Narnia? I have a whole list. More, most important, let me get to the most important one. Do you not agree with me, or what are you doing? I'm, I'm pointing out to you that all of these movies, if you say that Die Hard is a Christmas film, you open the door to say that all these movies are Christmas films. In, in particular, let's go to three. The three that are most important to me. Lethal Weapon, First Blood, Trading Places. Yep. Let, let's just take a minute on those. Forget all the ones I just gave you, right? Trading Places, to me, is more of a Christmas movie than Die Hard. 
in Italy, it is played nonstop on it's Christmas. True, yeah. It's the movie, that, like, you know how in America, A Christmas Story is yep. like, that. in Italy, it's trading places. You've got a full dressing up as Santa. You have multiple Christmas references. You have, um, what am I missing? The music. Yep. So I think, I mean, by definition, if you want to go hardcore what a Christmas movie is, so you can draw a line in the sand, you can either do two things. You can say, it's got to have Santa or Jesus in it. Or it's got to be a fan. Fam- Jesus has nothing to do with, with Christmas, by the it's way. It's his birthday, bro. I know, but they, it, it's, I mean, you ever watch South Park when they joke about how, like, it literally ignores him? Yeah. Je- Jesus is minimally in. There's fine, a- fine. No Jesus, Santa. Yeah. Fine. It has to have Santa in it. Or it's a family based drama where the conflict in the movie is based on the fact that it's Christmas. That, that excludes Die Hard. Your, your definition just excludes Die Hard. Exactly. So, die, so you're saying Die Hard's not a Christmas uh, movie? I'm kind of in that camp now, yeah. Because look what you just said. You I said know. Sound of Music. Well, I'm not, I'm like, let's just back up. Let's back not up. Let's not, let's, go back to, let's not go back to Die Hard yet. Let's talk about Trading Places, Lethal Weapon, and First Blood. The, easy, the easiest to refute is First Blood. The argument that I make about why First Blood is a Christmas film is because the entire town is decorated with Christmas lights, and there's Christmas stuff everywhere, and they reference Christmas. It has nothing to do with the story. First Blood can exist completely without any mention of Christmas, correct? Correct. So that is on the spectrum the most ridiculous argument to make, but you could make it. In the middle is Lethal Weapon, right? The lethal tree, Weapon, Lethal area. Weapon, you've got music. I mean, like, it ends the movie with a Christmas song. Yeah. But what is the song that plays at the end of Lethal Weapon? I'll Be Home for Christmas. Yep. I mean, remember when, remember when Riggs is contemplating suicide? Mm-hmm. And the TV's the whole on. Movie, you mean? Yeah, I know, right? But like getting real close to it, and his TV's on. Bugs Bunny is singing a uh, Christmas song in the background. Like it's it's all over. So I mean, and it's and the story of the redemption, the family. So here's the argument, though. This is all secondary. Like the thing is, it's a Christmas movie second. You know what I mean? It's an action movie first. So that's your Die Hard argument, and that's your Predator. So do, is Predator not a sci-fi film? No, it's an action movie. Yeah, so this is where I disagree. I think this you is where you have the, to, you say it's the number one action movie. It is, but it's also a sci-fi film. You have to create nuance. So in the top, when we ranked our top ten sci-fi movies, did we rank Predator even in the top uh, top ten of that? You're right. Yeah, but if you ranked your top twenty five sci-fi films, I would slide it in there. Yeah, but you can't have a secondary being a definitional Christmas movie. So, like, if I'm a if I'm a all star <laughs> baseball player and an okay ba- NBA basketball player, you know, I play two sports. I don't. In the Hall of Fame, I don't say, like, I was also a great basketball player. Well, then why do we have a genre of film called rom-com? So instead of calling it a comedy, why don't you call it a romantic film? Instead of calling it a romantic film, why don't you call it a comedy? Because neither one of those movies people want to see by themselves. <laughs> but, so it's a marketing No ploy. one's like, I need to see a romantic movie. That's fine, movie. but it's a marketing ploy. I don't know. I think romantic movies never worked without the comedy. It's like a milk and cookies argument. All films have comedy. Uh, Die Hard has comedy in it. Would you consider that a no, uh, action serious. comedy? It's not though. It has great comedy. No, it's in really it. funny. So, that, yeah. do you understand my point? All films exist with multi-genre aspects of it. Just because you're better at arguing doesn't mean you're right. You're, that's fair. <laughs> that's, and you are terrible at arguing. I don't even. I, I'm doing okay. I think the way. I think the place that I fall on this, and maybe this will kind of bring us to a closure on this on this conversation. The reason I brought up Lethal Weapon and First Blood and Trading Places. Training Places to me is as, forget the other two, I put them in there for poops and giggles. Training Places to me is as much of a Christmas film as Die Hard is. The two of them are neck and neck. In Hmm. fact, for me, I think watching Trading Places is much more traditional for me than watching Die Hard when it comes to Christmas movies. However, there's an element of feel. There's a there's a feel to this, right? And yep. and and maybe I can't describe it, but because it's an essence, like it's hard to like describe that. Die right? Hard feels like a Christmas movie. Yeah, it's a mood. It it's it is, and when you watch it, it and maybe it's again the 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 jingle bells that are mixed into Secondary the sound, elements. and you can hear it yeah. in there. And there's constant visual elements. Whereas like the references, yeah. Whereas like even Trading Places, which I love and I consider it a holiday film. It's not like as embedded, and when it's there, you don't think of it. But in this movie, like I've got a machine gun, ho ho ho. Yeah, I, there's just like it's dripping with this holiday and the holiday party, right? And, and the fact that it's so cold out too. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And the whistling, the song, you yeah. know. And I, I don't know. I think Die Hard has to be considered a Christmas movie, the same way that I think that Predator has to be considered a sci-fi movie. 
if you put a gun to my head and said explicit single genre, I'm going to say action film for both. Yep. Die Hard's an action film. Predator's an action so film. So it's a secondary Christmas movie, I yeah. think, is what we'll allow. I, I don't think that's a bad way of looking at no, it either. Because there's only really, per decade, there's only like 10 definitional actual holiday movies. I think the, if that. Correct. Yeah. And, here, and here's the other thing, too. If you look at soundtracks of films mm. over like a 30-year period, only 3%, I think, of the songs that end up in soundtracks are Christmas songs. Where'd you find that fact? I I, I don't even know. I went deep into the internet. Really? Yeah. I, I want to see references. I swear to God, I'll find it. Yeah, find it right now. I will. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> don't challenge me. You can't put out percentages and just be like, eh, it's out there. Boom. Found it. Really? Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Him and hawing a little bit. I just want to read you the right part. Yeah. Things that are wrong.com. Okay. So this is a song list of three quarters of all films released in the past 35 years. Oh, three quarters. That identified the songs culturally with Christmas. Mm-hmm. Of those films, 95.5% did not feature any Christmas songs. Okay. Hold on. I got more data. What's for this you. website? Uh, hold on. Just give me one second here. The most widely used Christmas song is Jingle Bells, which is funny because it's not a Christmas song, as we discovered, followed by Deck the Halls and then Joy to the World. And percentage of movies released in U.S. cinemas, which feature at least one Christmas song from 1988 to 2017. Okay. The highest, highest point of that, 7%. Okay. So the reason that this is... Who who researched this? Some giant nerd. What's film, what's film, that? film and uh, Stephen follows... Film. Okay, yeah, this is the guy. Yeah. This is the guy who makes the diehard argument. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got the numbers. Yeah. He did okay. the work, Max. Fair. So as I'm as I was pointing out before you challenged my numbers, yep. the point that I'm trying to make is there has to be something to be said for the fact that you have multiple Christmas songs in this movie, because that's another thing that just doesn't happen by accident. And that's also why it probably feels so Christmassy when you watch Die Hard. I like it. I don't even know where you stand. Where do you stand on this? We're at the end of the show. No, secondary Christmas movie. All right. I'm so like the thing look, is look, forget the secondary. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yeah. Fudge. Strong. You sound yeah. stand. I'm confused. All right. I, I took the argument. I didn't think I was going to take the anti argument, but I took it. I think Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Yeah. I will add to that. I also think that Trading Places is a Christmas movie. Now I don't think Die Hard is a Christmas movie because yeah. you're saying Trading Places. Good work, Max. And yeah. on that note, why don't we see what our Buzz in the Tower fan spotlight has to say about this burning question? Max, today's Buzz in the Tower fan spotlight is our friend Brian Typhon from the Great White North. He is our Canadian hoser. Yeah, he's awesome. He is awesome. You're awesome, Max. What do you think of that? I said it. He also has a podcast, The Nostalgic Dad. It's on uh, Spotify, YouTube, and he's also got the Typhon Scene podcast on YouTube. Why don't you spell that for the folks at home? T-Y-P-H-E-N Stein, S-T-E-I-N. I I like it, Max. I like it. So we got a guy who knows his business. He can talk into a mic. He can uh, form ideas. He's walking to bubblegum. Better than you. So let's see what he had to say about this question. Hello, it's Brian again from the Great White North. We finally have snow here, and I hate my life. I hate snow. Which brings us to the topic at hand because Christmas is coming. Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie or isn't it a Christmas movie? I think it's very clear. It's a Christmas movie. And here's why. Well, one thing, the narrative story behind this is pretty much a man just trying to get home to his family for Christmas. While there's this other man who's pretty much Scrooge, who's a terrorist taking over this big giant tower because he wants all the money. And he's too poor or too greedy, I should say, to want to pay everyone else because he just wants the money for himself. Also, there's a dead terrorist dressed up as Santa Claus at one point in time. You can see some Christmas trees. Um... Gruber has a Christmas spirit because uh, he at one point he says, it's Christmas, Theo. It's a time for miracles. Also, the soundtrack features Run DMC's Christmas and Hollis. There's also like two versions of Let It Snow on the on the soundtrack as well. Um, I think there's a Jingle Bells on the soundtrack as well. I, I looked it up quickly, uh, so I'm kind of just pulling off the fly of my head here. I could be wrong on that one. Uh, but also at the end, the limo driver is saying how he's looking forward to the New Year's. So that would set it at the Christmas time period. So we're going to say it's a Christmas movie. And uh, if you guys want to argue about it, you know, that's fine too. Uh, but it's a Christmas movie. But it's okay. We can agree to disagree if you want to. Anyways, thank you again for having me on. I appreciate it. And I look forward to the new year and everything that you guys do. And I'll talk to you guys later. I mean, 
It seems like the prevailing logic here is that Die Hard is yeah, a Christmas movie. Fine. I'm kind of surprised that you took the anti position. It wouldn't be fun if we took the. You got to take both sides. Devil's I advocate. You do like it on both sides. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Max, with that, we've conquered. By the, the way, I, I heard. Uh, oh God, this, this gonna have to cut this out. Whatever, is, I'm sure. <laughs> Go ahead. No, please. There's a guy that works like the McDonald's drive-through, mm-hmm. and every time, like, say you order something, order something from McDonald's. Okay, give me a slice of pizza. A slice of pizza? <laughs> he, he just questions everything, and it's really awkward. Good, <laughs> great story, Max. Yep. Max, uh, that concludes our show. Thank you so much, as always, for joining. It's always a pleasure to see your pretty face sitting across from me. Uh, next week, sarcasm. Max. Yeah, sarcasm. Next week, we're not recording, but you will be uh, enter- entertained with a repeat of our Rebecca Tickell from Prancer, which is one of our favorite episodes. We run it every holiday season. Then we're back to record a couple more times, and then we are in January, and uh, we've got video. We've got 90s. We've got it all. It's going to be exciting. Until then, I say rate, review, leave five stars. Follow us on social media at Buzz in the Tower. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and Kwanzaa. Uh, Kwanzaa and Max, what do you got? Uh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Scraping the barrel. Can I just get a diehard quote from you? Just a die, just Yippee Kai Yay. No, one we haven't done. Okay. Uh, Maybe just go type on your computer diehard quotes <laughs> and, read, and read one. That would be great. I got 50 bucks on this game. Oh, you did that one too, Max. If uh, we could just do a quote. Yellow you die yet. number five. No, we did that one too. Uh, Down here. It's well, our time. <laughs> what do I call you? Call me Roy Rogers. Roy. Okay, Roy. Great job, Max. Talk to you later. <laughs>